Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. It was a hot one here in Wichita. Lots of winds, the promise of rains, and uh, the the uh, western uh, third of the um, state did get some moisture. It streamed up from Oklahoma, kind of taken out, uh, <clears throat> and put did put down a lot of moisture. Uh, we've got. We've gotten teas so far, but they do have uh, rain in the forecast for us today, and hopefully it materializes. We need it. Uh, looks like they're getting snow in western Nebraska, northwestern Kansas, and eastern Colorado. Uh, it is May the 12th, so there's always tends to be a late winter snowstorm in that part of the world. Uh, hopefully it doesn't hurt the wheat crop any more than it's damaged. Right now, because of a lack of moisture, okay. The tendency post an auction is for the market to trade lower, and this is a post auction week. All the work and what the mechanism is is that the primary dealer sells futures and uh, drives the market lower, setting up the next auction. We've got pretty good volume down here in the uh, twenty four sixteen area, so I think best support is in the sixteen to twenty area. Uh, we've got volume at 125, which stopped the market. So uh, there's no news to drive the trading today. So expecting to trade, you know, 124, 16 minus 125 plus makes some sense. Uh, so I had the first sell this morning at 28 to the buck, and then at three to seven. On the buy side, I'd like to get started buying at 17 to 21, and then 9 to 13 for buy two. No news to drive the trading, so I think the direction of the ES will be primal today, and it is pointed higher. So that's what I've got for the <clears throat> note to get started. It's Monday morning. Uh, things are usually pretty quiet uh, to get started until the market sorts itself out. Uh, very little news released overnight. Probably the biggest news was China said that uh, the country was going to have to accept lower growth rates. And it's real easy to achieve very, very high growth rates when you first start out or when you're coming out of a recession or no growth. Uh, situations they would be comparable uh, as far as the potential for growth goes. Uh, as a <clears throat> economy matures and gets bigger, it gets harder and harder to achieve that growth. Uh, China has been said by some studies, I believe it was by the World Bank or by the IMF, that based on parity or purchasing power that uh, China is about to overtake the United States. Based on per capita GDP and the actual size of the economy, they've got a ways to go. So uh, great for making headlines, great for getting your research work and paper in front of other people, uh, but somewhat stretching the truth. Got a B pattern overnight. Selling into early strength is what we want to do here. Uh, the uh, last rotate up uh, stopped in London at uh, 22. Uh, we're at 18, so selling 21s, top of value to 25, and then selling 29s to 01s for sell 2. On the buy side, we've got some volume down to eight, at 8. Uh, the overnight low is 15, so don't think we're going to get wholesale selling today. The bottom will fall out of the market, so we'll make buy 1, 9 to 13, and then buy 2, 1 to 5, and we'll adjust as we go along. Knob spread's holding its own, but it has come in quite a bit. Last week we uh, peaked at 11.22. Uh, this morning had it at 11.23 when we started out. So. It is coming in, as you would expect. Uh, the rally to 11.22 started at 10.21. There's probably really, really good support in that 10.16 area. So 10.16, 10.20 uh, might give us a, bu a 
bounce in the uh, mouse in the uh, knob spread. Okay, gold is lower. I, I mean, it's holding its own. It's not really um, breaking out or making a run. Uh, if things quiet down in the Ukraine, um, the um, gold can settle down. So we're gonna we're finding ourselves in the same situation that uh, we've got resistance at 1300. Uh, we had hoped to buy the 78 to 80 area on Friday. Uh, we got down, looks like, to 77. Uh, the news out of Ukraine is uh, that the Ukraine has voted to join Russia. Now, <clears throat> lots of fake ballots were seized, all sorts of problems. Kiev says the uh, ballot box were stuffed. Russia says they're happy uh, the, of the outcome of the vote, but uh, there must be a peace, peaceful solution. Uh, so we're going to see how that shakes out. I think, like we've said for the last couple of weeks, that Russia, the Russian model has come in, take a province from the country that uh, they're trying to whip back into shape, show that they can dominate them um, any time that they want, uh, put the uh, politicians of that potential breakaway country back in their place, and then business as usual. So Russia has taken the Crimea. They've solidified and uh, protected their outlet to the Black Sea. Uh, the eastern Ukraine, uh, which is where all the industrial uh, might of the Ukraine is, has voted to join Russia. Russia is saying, hey, OK, we know what you want to do and everything, and we're here for you, but there's no need to uh, uh, do anything right now. So uh, we're in the same situation we were on a Friday. Uh, we've got resistance uh, in the 95 area, then resistance at 1300. So the market is pointed higher. We can go up a little bit. So let's make 98, 1300, sell one. And then 3 to 5 for sell two. On the buy side, we have all this volume at 90. We're at 96 right now. So let's make 91, 89, buy one. And then we broke this thing out at 85, 85, 87 for buy two. All last week we were trying to buy the 85 area, 87 area, uh, just because of the political and monetary unrest around the globe. And I don't think that's changed one bit. Uh, some interesting articles out on where Draghi is and what he has to do. Um, come June. It doesn't mean that he'll do it. The European Central Bank is limited. They can't buy paper like uh, the Fed can. They can't uh, build a balance sheet like the Fed can. So Draghi is pretty well left with rhetoric. And um, we'll see how good he is at pulling it off. Uh, he's promised some easing. Now they can do uh, easing through repos, where and they've done this before, where the European um, Central Bank will do repos with various banks and entities, uh, where they'll take that paper in on a repo basis uh, with a time certain, and it goes back to um, whichever entity they took that paper from. So there is one way to get around it, and they've used it before, but they can't actually build a balance sheet by buying it outright. They can lend money on it, but that's it. So my guess is uh, if Draghi's going to maintain some face come June, they'll do some of that. OK, the euro is holding its own. It's a B pattern. Uh, European Central Bank, European finance ministers all over the EU want the euro to sell. So they got a shot at increasing revenues through exporting to somebody other than themselves. And you can see right up here that we've got pretty good resistance at 38 and then at 38.25. So this is our resistance zone. And on the support side, we're really in this high volume area in this uh, 60.65. So uh, we last week we were trying to buy 40s to 50s. That seems reasonable today. Say make it 50 plus or minus 5 for buy one. If we break that, then um, 25 to 35 buy two. 
on the cell side, 75 to 85 cell 1, and then 95 to 05 for cell 2. It's hard to fight the central bank, although traders have made uh, Draghi's life very, very uncomfortable uh, by rallying the euro pretty much all of last month. But uh, they really, really want the uh, euro to be lower. And over time, it's hard to fight a central bank. OK, crude's up a little bit. Two stories for crude. Perhaps the economic growth has returned to the world, and we've got modest, moderate economic growth, as everybody's central bank, the World Bank, and the IMF are predicting. And they have to predict that. They can't come out and say the world's major economy are going to tank and not grow. Their ability to make loans and to print money is dependent upon growth to bail them out. So uh, that's their um, storyline, and they're going to stick to it. Okay, we got volume right up here in the 175 area. I think it's going to be pretty easy to get there. So selling 100 to 101 is sell 1. And then 25 to 50 will be sell 2. Um, buying against 100 looks reasonable. We got volume there. So 100 to 75 to 100 will be buy 1. And then we'll have uh, 25 to 50 for buy 2. Crude is signaling either economic growth is returning around the globe or there's still enough unrest in the Ukraine that uh, there's be a premium in crude oil to reflect that unrest and the chance that fighting can break out. OK, I want to show you a couple of combinations on the E-mini. It is pointed higher this morning structurally. And we'll look at first at F1. And you can see if we put all of this together, we're dealing still with P's. And you can see that volume is moving higher in the distributions. Should pop up right now. So for whatever the reason, the Fed, uh, economic growth returning the second quarter, lots of different reasons. You can see that volume is moving up in each of these distributions. And we're still dealing with a P. And if somebody put a gun to your head and you had to make a trade, you would make it from the long side. And we do an end split on this with a move out of the middle. And I'll show you another take on this. So like it or not, uh, as uncomfortable it might be for fundamentalists out there, there's a lot of reasons that say that we should not be this high, but we are. And you really can't fight the tape. Now, I don't think there's a piece, certainly not today, there's not a piece of news that can take the market higher. Uh, but you got to remember that high frequency traders can create an environment of plus ticks. And that's all the market needs to trade higher. High frequency trading is really very easy. If there's plus ticks out there, if the money's going to the long side, they join it. And because they can help create this, uh, they can do it. So uh, we, you can see right up here that resistance really begins in this 85 area. And you've got 92.50 right here. So the issue is, uh, can we take out resistance at 85 to 92.50? And my guess is we're going to probe there, but I don't think that the news is right to take it out. So I want to get long first to trade into that area. But if we can't take it out, I can trade from the short side. And when you take a look at the F2 screen, you can see that the paper is going to the long side, which also leads me to believe that we're going to at least retest resistance. Now, one of the things is, is that 
as a trader and what if your belief system is so strong that you can only see your own opinion you cannot be you're not going to be successful at this business because you really are forced to see things see what is you have to really really be able to assess and see reality and no matter whether you like it or not if the market is trading higher it's trading higher so right now you can see that we've got some resistance at 81 8150 uh, we're going to have resistance in the 85 area the last rotate up uh, two trading sessions ago stopped at 84 so I think we're in a position to retest this 84 area so selling failure to take out 84 86 I think is a good trade and then the other trade is going to be 89 to 91 selling against that previous high at 92.50 and I, I just I don't, I don't think the market is right or ripe to uh, break out right now but that doesn't mean that it can't so want to get long first to see if we can take out 84 86 and if we can't then I can trade from the short side so we're going to make buy one against 75. See a very, very clean break in the market down here. So this 75. Uh, we've got volume at 77. So this is going to be buy one. And then buy two is going to be 70, 72. No news to drive today's trading. The Treasury budget is announced at 2 o'clock Eastern. I uh, expected to show a surplus of $114 billion. That ain't chump change, but and it is positive, uh, which does support economic growth, increased tax base. And uh, so uh, that's one piece of tangible news. The other one is, is that merger acquisitions take over. When the markets are quiet, and companies have excess cash and they want to make a strategic play to help increase their uh, uh, company's chances down the road they start buying up other companies as opposed to buying their own stock and corporations are flush with cash uh, right now and it's pretty easy for them to do that so mergers and acquisition season comes during these pauses and people are afraid to sell their stock so because they might be bought out or taken over so that restricts supply and when supply is restricted and demand i.e. the money that's held by these large corporation is intact and has to be spent someplace uh, and they're content that their business is fine as is and no reason to grow it they go out and buy other companies and that's another th another way to hold the stock market at these levels and in a trading range I'm going to turn off the recording